How do you think that in 25 years, science has made a value to the economy and society? The whole digitization and um, making data accessible and getting, getting the information out of the, out of the drawing office and building a better connected world. I think that's, you know, science had a part in that. So um, we talk about as a company, designing tomorrow together. I think we've, for the first 25 years, we've enabled that platform for people to be able to design and collaborate better. So I think in our little way, uh, we've helped our customers and our partners be more effective and, and benefit from the digital, um, the digital revolution. So what is the core unique selling proposition of Scient in the overall technologies ecosystem? Where Scient came from because of that heritage with digitization and data and where the business has always been very strong is a real, you know, um, and Reddy, who you know very well, used to talk about PPT, um, process, people and technology. And I think it's that real um, ability to marry sort of engineering and IT. Mm -hmm. So our ability to be able to consistently um, do things right, um, build a process and then then improve on it. So we we use technology, we enable technology, but really it's about delivering consistency and delivering quality and then improving on it year on year. And I think that's really what we bring to the industry where a lot of people get blinded by technology and get very excited about the, the next bit of kit and whatever, but actually what underpins a lot of Certainly, the geospatial industry and great things like BIM is you know is the content, and you need the reliable information, you need consistent information, you need accurate information, and I think that's where we've been, you know, we differentiate ourselves a little bit from other people. How far engineering uh, has been uh, kind of driver for your growth, as well as where do you see the key value of geospatial into engineering solutions? I mean, our business started doing digitization, um, started doing a lot of data capture, but I think, you know, the, and then there was an inflection point around some 99, 2000 when we had our first engineering customer, you know, United Technologies were looking for a partner to help them on air, um, aircraft design, and they chose us, despite the fact we didn't have that domain knowledge. And I think the reason why they came to us was because, again, of that process, that quality, that um, uh, desire to sort of go the extra mile with the customer. It's been really helpful for us to apply that into other markets where we've maybe been using geospatial more. So you take, a, you know, there's lots of parallels if you take aerospace, um, you look at the utility market again, safety, absolutely critical, um, and maybe some of the GIS data and some of the GIS information maybe doesn't have the same level of criticality to the overall organization. If we take what we learn from our engineering customers and apply it back into some of our more traditional GIS markets, I think it's been a really uh, a really good exercise. Where do you see and how do you see your partner network building up uh, in terms of technology acquisition and system integration? We talk about um, in our business quite often about sort of data-driven solutions. So we see you know, the, um, having the right, you know, the right content, the right data underpinning what you're doing as being absolutely key. And I think in terms of that then, um, we've always tended to um, try and work with the industry leading players in, um, in terms of technology. And I think what we've got to do more and more is also work with, um, uh, collaborate with some of the big systems integrators, the big engineering companies. We're actively working and thinking who are the right partners, both from a technology perspective, but also from an overall, if you like, uh, uh, program management perspective. So collaboration and partnerships are emerging as the prerequisite of the business of tomorrow. I would say, I, I don't think they're emerging. I think they've been there um, already. And you know, we have a strong record. I mean, we, you know, our business is built around partnering. And you know, we're not a business to consumer. We're not a product company. So our whole business model is about helping our customers be successful. So there, you know, we talk about our customers being our partners. Those are very formal automotives and other industries. It's all very formalized in terms of the supply chain. So um, I think we're going to see more and more of that. And we are seeing that in, in, in markets like so communications. How do, how do you categorize your partners? Like as you said, tier two, tier three, tier one partners. So how do you, uh, who are your tier one or tier two partners? If you look on the technology side, you know, we've people who we've worked with for a long time in the geospatial area. You know, you know, we've had a long relationship with somebody like GE. Yeah, we've always yeah, we've always used people people like Bentley and their technology. So they would, from a technology perspective, they'd be very important. A, an organisation like Siemens again is very important for us because we'll work with them in certain markets. If we look at science, and you know, we operate in seven or eight different markets. We operate in multiple geographies. So ultimately, the if you like the gold standard partners have to be those that touch multiple geographies and touch multiple industries. So do we foresee you entering into some kind of strategic alliances with the consulting firms like Acom or? PwC or 
uh, these are emerging yeah, as the absolutely. drivers of this uh, industry. I think if you're looking at areas like, um, back to something like smart cities, one of the areas where we've been successful if we're working with sort of consultancies and strategic guys and you know, here in the UK PA consultants another organization we've had a good relationship with where you put those two organizations together so you know, we're very good on the, the technology the implementation the content the solution and they're quite good on the consulting and the and the roadmap if you like and that's that, that that's been quite profitable for us and quite successful uh, do you see the exclusivity which has ruled geospatial industry in the past is breaking now and we are learning how to work with competitors for delivering solutions? I think it's getting easier. I mean, again, just talking to people, are, you know, there are, again, a lot of it unfortunately comes down to sort of um, data and standards and um, openness of handling geospatial data. I think it's getting better. And if you look at most of the organizations, you take a utility or a, or a comms organization, most of them will have um, most of the competing technology anyway. So the reality is that th they're faced with those situations. So it's more of a, an issue for the industry to make sure we, you know, we support that. So I'd like to think those barriers are breaking down, but unfortunately, I think the, when you get to the, some of the GIS technology companies, they're still a bit parochial, if that's, yeah. a, if that's a fair. Mm -hmm.